you want to join in any club paradise, you'd really rather stay at home where the picture is clear. Cars is a troubled franchise. The biggest sore thumb of Pixar's lineage, the criticism that holds the most water lies in the fact that there is no real narrative reason for the cars to be cars. The cars exist in a human-like society with human-like goals and occupations. Lightning McQueen could have easily been a race car driver, Maida could have been a small town yokel, and so on and so forth. The roles and relationships the characters play are solely human in their dynamic. In a film like Toy Story, the situations presented are uniquely toy subjective, and largely pivot around the toy's relationship with human society from their own secret world. I'm sure you've seen the same video essays I have though, so I'm gonna save you the trouble of going through that whole thing. The toys relationship is one based in love and protection, as toys are built to be loved, played with, collected, passed down. That's the core reason they exist, mementos of human emotion and affection. In the world of Cars, the lack of human presence is sorely missed, and I see a lot of suggestions for the series to align itself with the thought philosophy of Toy Story, express what Cars can do for humans, explore why they do it, and maybe stress the dynamic between them. However, I think Cars should take a leap from a different playbook, one not even of Pixar's library. It's him! He's back! The Brave Little Toaster is another film that is crudely compared to Toy Story on the rudimentary idea that things on our house are coming to life. The reality is though that despite its expressive and often comical characters, the relationship that the film's living appliances share with humans is much bleaker. In the world of Toy Story, we see toys that are abused, abandoned, mutilated, but it's established early that this is not the norm. In the world of the Brave Little Toaster, however, this dynamic gets flipped on its head. Whilst the master, a young boy idolized by the characters of the film, shows love and appreciation for all of the appliances, the toaster buddies have to go through a trial, a coming of age. One day, the master vanishes and leaves behind every single appliance in the house, even his beloved electric blankie, characterized with a young child's voice and mannerisms. Our titular character, the brave little toaster, makes an executive decision that the master must be found, and the appliances must reunite with him. What? Immediately encountering opposition, the family's AC unit is shown to have lost all hope. His attitude is cynical, aggressive, manic. What is it with you guys anyway? You act like you just came off the assembly line. Now get this through your chrome. We've been dumped. Abandoned. Ultimately giving in after taunting and trying to dissuade Toaster, he ends up exploding, resenting the master for leaving him behind. Just cause you can move around, you think you're better than I am. I'm not an invalid! I was designed to stick in a wall! I like being stuck in this stupid wall! I can't help it if the kid was too short to reach my dials! We didn't mean it! Really? It's my function! Don't! Wait! Wait! He's gonna Our party hasn't even left the house yet, and as soon as this is when we get our first glimpse at the impact of human neglect. This is a recurring theme throughout the film, which ultimately culminates in the characters facing a proverbial hell created by the humans, one that, in reality, is completely the norm outside of their sheltered world. In the infamous Worthless Song number, we see a marching line of damned souls being ushered to their demise, whether they've given up, ready, broken, or terrified, they're all here because they've been used up. Not loved, not preserved, they're worthless and now it's time to be scrapped. Even the machine being used to crush these poor souls into cubes is another appliance, a menacing looming electromagnet with a huge pair of eyes. At the end of the day though, just another tool for the humans. By the end of the film though, we do get a happy ending, the gang manages to get themselves in front of the eyes of a now grown up master who lovingly adorns his new home with them out of nostalgia and loyalty. The appliances come to learn the value of their relationship with him in a world where uncaring, cold, callousness is the norm. So where does the world of cars fit into this? Well, cars are vehicles. Not just in the literal sense, but they are tools that are uniquely married to the human journey. 
In the brave little toaster, the cars and the words they sang seem uniquely influenced by the owners who drove them, the situations they were put through, and how despite being part of that human journey, here they are, discarded anyway. The relationships are extremely one-sided, with the humans being totally oblivious to the blight they've inflicted. There's one line that sticks out in particular. I once ran the Indy 500. I must confess I'm impressed how I did it. I wonder how close that I came. Now I get a sinking sensation. I was the top of the line, out of sight, out of mind, so much for fortune and fame. These are the words of a used up race car. You can probably start to get an idea of where I'm going with this, but let's press on. There are obvious metaphors at play throughout the song, that different vehicles represent different folies of man, different classic arcs of falls from grace, but they all represent the idea that no matter how hard they worked, the one-sided relationship they shared with their masters, or in the case of exploring the metaphor society, spat them out and left them to wither and die. Unlike toys, cars are tools. After all, they're made to be used, they're made to expire, they're made to be replaced. I want you to envision a very different setup for cars. A world in which cars are brought out of assembly, put in a showroom, and bought by an owner who does what they please with them. Just like in real life. In the secret world of cars, however, some of them love their drivers, and have happy relationships. Some of them love being taxis, rideshares, hearing the stories of commuters going to and from. But others had their own dreams. City buses that wanted to work out in the fields with the tractors, logging trucks that want to live a glorious Rolls Royce lifestyle of glitz and glamour, hearses with a crippling fear of the undead. Not only is there room for plenty of comedy here, but also building a strong, resonant theme that touches on our own feelings and frustrations from being boxed in, by being assigned an identity, by falling into toxic relationships, friendships, commitments. And what if, dare I say, what if we had a Lightning McQueen that didn't want to race? A Lightning McQueen that saw himself as someone who would get to take life slow, revel in the beauties of the world, but was built as a sports car. A Lightning McQueen who would be raced around the track hundreds of times against his will, till his tires burn out and his engine breaks down, only to have it replaced each and every day before it's back to the track. Perhaps a Lightning McQueen who makes an escape from life in the races, hounded by his owner and a team of bounty hunters. Obviously this is just loose ideas and floating plot points, you can start to see the picture I'm painting, I hope. By creating a world that explores the tensions in this dynamic, the plot lines become a lot more interesting than just Fast car wants to win the biggest races, it's Mr. Kachow! Whilst it sounds bleak, I think exploring the importance of breaking off bad or toxic controllers, carving your own path in life, reclaiming autonomy, and building healthier relationships with those who respect who you actually are would be incredibly pertinent, relevant, and healthy messages to convey to family audiences of young and old alike. I'd like to wrap this up by saying I disagree that cars is an idea that could never work, as I've seen so many say. I also disagree that it would be as simple as creating the same dynamic seen in other Pixar films. The nature of the relationships shown, and then that would need to be deconstructed, are inherently different, and it would actually raise unique and appropriate answers to that old chestnut. Why are they cars? I know this is different to my my usual videos, but hey, I, 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 you let me get away with a video about Grammarly, so, you know, whatever. I guess, I guess I'm free to go. That's, see ya, ka-chow!